Hello YouTube, I'm out here putting a little use on this Topps Max Punisher knife. I filmed a review of this over a year ago, but a lot of the use footage was ruined. Uh, just the sun started coming out, there was a lot of glare. It was unusable. So I never posted it. Right, so now I'm, I'm taking another crack at it. One reason is because I recently got this blade the Topps 170 machete and I almost consider this Topps Punisher to be the little brother to that knife. Alright I think you can see kind of the similarities alright this 170 machete 10 inch blade length the Topps knife a little bit shorter but thicker and heavier All right, so a little matched pair you can check out my review of that machete I'll put a link but today I'm going to put some use on this Max Punisher. Alright, and like I said, we just had the first snow, okay? There's not much, you know, all I have to test this out on is what I call the stump of truth. And no, it's not meant to chop down a tree, but it should be a good test of durability and you get to see it bite into a target. This heavy chopping design is doing exceedingly well for such a short length of knife relative to most choppers, but I can tell you one thing I already knew from my previous testing. Very uncomfortable hot spot for the pinky. All the force of a heavy chop going right into the pinky right there. Okay, now this blade also has a chisel tip, right? That, the tip is not symmetrical. It's not symmetrical, it's like a pry bar tip. Let's test how durable that is. Okay, I don't have a mallet to, to pound this like a real chisel, all right, but we're gonna do the best we can testing the durability of that tip. Alright, so how is the tip and the edge itself after that bashing? Very good. I don't see any irregularities, dents, or rolling. Here's the, uh, that edge and tip. I don't see much wear at all on the edge itself. Some on the finish, of course. Nice. Alright, and it has a basher pommel. Hey, while we're out here, might as well try that out too. Well, it's a strong impact surface, no doubt, but the contour of this handle, very uncomfortable for hitting hard like that. Very uncomfortable handle. Hey, I'm going to give you the straight truth. No sugar coating. All right, people. Well, let's go inside and, and do a more detailed uh, tabletop show of the features. And I will roll in old footage where I already reviewed the sheath that this comes with. Here is a nylon sheath that it does come with. This is the knife in the sheath. It is Molly compatible. See it has eyelets and some cord there. You can lash it to your hip. That is the belt loop there. It is a secondary pocket here with a Kydex, Kydex buckle. It does come with one of those tops flat signal whistles that all their stuff comes with. It has two retention straps. They are horizontal Velcro, Velcro closure. 
right? It, it does hold it in pretty well. Deployment, obviously, pretty easy. All right, here we are. We, we punished the Punisher knife a little bit. Now I think the biggest misconception about this knife is that it's a knife. Let me explain what I mean. This is basically, I, I consider this a multi-tool, all right? If you want a knife, don't buy this. If you want a knife, buy a knife. This is a Browning Competition Chopper. It'll slice, it'll chop, and that's what it does. It's a knife. On the other hand, what this thing is, is a pry bar, a hammer, a chisel, and a meat cleaver all in one tool. So basically, this is a multi-tool. All right, so if you want a multi-tool, get this. If you want a knife, well, get a knife. All right, let's go through the features. First of all, uh, the blade length, like from right there to the tip, is eight inches. The actual edge, from, from the start of the edge to the tip, is seven and one half inches. As you can see, primary bevel here. All right. As you can see, it doesn't have much of a pointed tip. It's it's basically that sharpened pry bar philosophy. It is full tang, and as you can see, very thick stock, red liners, micarta handle scales. Nice. The blade coating. This is not a bead blast. It's an actual. It's like a powder coat, but it's gray instead of black. As for how the coating wears, it wears like you see there. It has chipped off in a couple places there. It held up pretty well. All right now these are not pointed. They are not sharp. Okay so this is not a saw. On the TOPS website they said this was for notching wood, notching trees. Alright well you know that that's what they say it's for. Here's the pommel, you see two lanyard holes there. And you see, you know, an extended tang. You could conceivably smash things with this. Maybe it's an urban rescue tool type of deal. Now I heard I heard this knife was in a movie. Yeah, I don't care, you know, I don't buy anything because it was in a movie. I got this because I I like the sharpened pry bar philosophy. And this is certainly not the first knife to have that philosophy of design. Uh, there's a well-known uh, K-Bar, one of their Becker knives, is, is a similar idea, right? There are many designs that are like that, that instead of giving you a pointed tip, they give you kind of a, you know, a pry bar slash secondary edge there. All right, so I like, I like the sharpened pry bar philosophy for some applications. Now here's a size comparison for you on the left, we have the uh, K bar, K bar zombie tanto. All right, as you can see, it's of comparable size as far as overall length to the Punisher knife. However, the Punisher knife is much wider. But in general, both these knives have a similar philosophy, kind of a chopper, straight edge, sharpened pry bar thing going on. All right to the right of the Punisher knife, that is an Ontario SP6. The SP6 is, it's derived from the K-Bar, right, but it's about a half inch longer than the K-Bar, which you see to the right of the SP6. And you can see the SP6 is a similar overall length to the Punisher knife, but as I said, you know, one of them's a knife, the Punisher knife is basically a multi-tool. It's like a miniature breaching tool, really, if you need to smash in windows and and do SWAT team type stuff, just prying stuff open. Uh, yeah, it's it's basically an urban multi-tool, urban survival tool type of thing. Is that something most people need? No, probably most people don't need that. Do some people need it? Yeah, you know, people in rescue, rescue personnel, SWAT team, etc. You know, I could see some people having a use for a, basically a mini pry bar that's also sharp. So basically, it's good for what it is. It's good for that specialized role. It's a stout, hefty, uh, urban survival multi-tool. 
All right, hope you liked the review. Uh, 